Hey guys, it's Amanda and I'm back with yet another video and some new hair, so pretty exciting stuff. But okay, so today's video is going to be about how I got into NYU Tisch for undergraduate film and television production. Um, so I did do a how I got into NYU video before this, but that was more academic oriented. So if you want to see that, uh, I will link it below. But um, I know some people did want to see a video about more of the creative process for getting into NYU Tisch, specifically as a film major. So yeah, I'm just going to be going through that and kind of telling you guys my experience with it and hopefully it can give you you know some sort of enlightenment um <laughs> i know that when i was like applying i scoured youtube for a video like this but i just could not find one so hopefully if that's the case for you right now this will just give you some sort of peace of mind and know that it's fine <laughs> I don't... okay that was like not really okay whatever let's just like get into it. So if I'm looking down, I'm just looking at the computer to kind of read off the steps of applying. So, okay. So the first thing NYU does accept the common application and I'm sure you'll know exactly like what that is by the time you're a senior in high school. And they also have a supplement along with their common app application, uh, which I also talked about that in my other video. So I'll just get right into the portfolio part. So for this major in Tisch, there is a five step creative portfolio required, uh, right? So I was actually like pretty, I hope you can't hear this chair like squeaking. Um, so when I like first found out that there is this like whole creative portfolio thing I, that was pretty daunting to me um because i'm definitely someone who's coming from like not really um like art so when i heard about the whole portfolio thing that was actually pretty daunting for me as someone who is not coming from like a super artistic background like i didn't do the traditional studio art classes in high school, I just did like some basic um, digital arts classes. Um, so yeah, I was a little bit intimidated by the portfolio part and I had never even thought to like put together any type of portfolio before like senior year when I first heard of this thing. Um, so yeah, if you're also intimidated by this portfolio thing, have no fear because this portfolio is actually um, basically all writing and yeah it's just like writing prompts they give you so i'll go through all the steps so for the first step of the creative portfolio you need a resume um, you need a one-page resume that highlights creative work accomplished activities and or relevant relevant employment so honestly this first step the resume is probably one of the easiest parts because you're really just listing stuff that you've done um that has related to anything creative. And when I mean like anything creative, I mean anything. Like I literally put like my French club on that cause I don't know, I just was like, it's in the realm of creativity in my opinion. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think you can basically put anything down on this. Maybe I like things I didn't put down was like things that were obviously just not creative or relating to any type of film work. Like I didn't put down my job. <laughs> I feel like this part is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> oh my god, I'm trying to think of advice, but like... Yeah, so I would say don't be discouraged if you don't have like any like super professional experience. That's totally okay. Just do things that you did um, within your school or your community and that is totally fine. I didn't really have any type of professional experience either. So yeah, I think you'll be fine. The second part of the creative portfolio is a leadership and collaboration anecdote. So leadership and collaboration are important ingredients for creating successful media projects. In 300 words or less, describe an experience in which you exercised leadership and or took part in a productive collaboration. We're interested in both your insights into these issues and your ability to tell an engaging short story. 
So 300 words is not a lot guys. Like I don't know if it sounds like a lot to you guys, but it's really not a lot at all. <laughs> um, it's like a paragraph essentially. So you kind of have to like figure out how to condense whatever you want to say into these 300 words. Um, personally for mine, I <laughs> the first thing that came to mind when I thought when I read this prompt was this project that I was working on um, in my 10th grade like intro to film class and we were doing this movie about how all these how about like all these humans turned into dolls okay guys so I'm just gonna read you guys my leadership and collaboration anecdote um, hopefully this can just give you guys a little example of what this might look like it could look like a lot of different things though but I know I just, it helps me to have examples. So here's mine. I leveled the tripod in the front of the classroom and looked at my audience. 10 pairs of beady eyes stared back at me. This wasn't the apathetic glare of students I'd recruited to be extras. In each desk sat an American Girl doll. For our first film and video project, Angelita, Carlotta, and I opted to create a horror short film. We couldn't venture into the realm of sun. <laughs> We couldn't venture into the realm of standard gore or exorcism, but we decided we'd make our film equally scary. It would be about a living doll. After a few weeks of filming, it was time to shoot the final scene. Carlotta, the main character, would enter a classroom and find that her peers had been replaced by dolls who would simultaneously turn their heads as she entered. It sounded great on paper, but we had a dwindling 30 minutes, 10 doll heads to turn, and two pairs of hands. We needed to improvise. After attempting stop motion, we realized it was nearly impossible to adjust the heads of dolls who were inclined to slip at the mere brush of one's fingers. What if we just did a few close-ups of, in of individual dolls in motions, I suggested. Yeah, we could use the dolls with long hair to hide our hands, Angelina chimed in. I crouched on the ground so I wasn't in the shot and stealthily twisted a synthetic neck. After a few takes, we arrived back to the classroom just as the bell rung. A few months later, Angelina, Carlotta, and I sat in the auditorium at a local media arts festival. Our film titled Doll, parentheses, how original, <laughs> began to play. When it reached the final scene, the doll's heads turned seamlessly and the audience gasp was music to my ears. See, so that's how mine was. That's actually, I feel like that's not that bad, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, hopefully you can, I, you guys can tell I really did try to make it, like, you know, engaging using strong action verbs and such, and using, like, um, I, hopefully this is the right word, but, like, cumulative sentences, you know, where you kind of, like, do the thing where you build up to something, <laughs> you know, like, to create a little bit of suspense. Um, but yeah, that, that's fine. Hopefully, you know, having that little example could help you guys a little bit. So I'll just get on to the next step. Um, okay, so the third step is a personal story. Um, and the prompt is to describe an event in your life and how it changed you or someone close to you. This event can be dramatic and or comedic, major or minor. This assignment should be written as a short story. Please do not write about why or what led you to pursue a degree in film and television production. Ultimately, we are looking for evidence of your potential as a storyteller. So I really do think this is important because of course, storytelling is just like a core thing in films and like, I don't know, as nice as your film might look, if it doesn't have a good story, it's just like, what is it at the end of the day, you know? Like, you know, it needs like substance. So I do think this one is important um i won't show you guys my personal story one because it is very personal <laughs> but honestly what had happened was <laughs> i had actually had to write like literally like a personal story for my english class in senior year and you know i got a really good feedback on it from my teacher so i was just like mm, i'm just gonna use this for this <laughs> prompt so luckily I didn't really have to do too much extra work for that um but yeah for this one I would just say try not to be cliche um that's a big thing just don't be cliche um I would definitely say get feedback on it and you know don't always get too much feedback on things because 
sometimes it kind of dilutes your artistic vision if you're kind of having all these voices talking at you but um yeah i feel like i can't give too much advice for this yeah <laughs> so the fourth part of the create of the creative portfolio is artistic influences so the prompt is how has a film play book television series painting music or other significant work of art inspired or influenced your own work or the way you look at the world please discuss this in 300 words or less no more than one typed double spaced page you may discuss more than one influence provided that you do not exceed the word limit so for this one, honestly, I don't know if this is like cheesy, but really the first thing that came to my head for this was Hamilton. I love Hamilton. Still haven't seen it, but I love it. <laughs> honestly, Hamilton was just such an inspiration to me. Like the writing of it, the motifs, the intricacy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was honestly a huge inspiration to me. And I remember one time I was just like feeling super inspired by Hamilton and I really just wanted to write like a really cool rhyme and poem because I don't know, when manuel Miranda basically did that with the whole thing of Hamilton. But um, yeah, so this is what I actually did for this. A little bit outside of the box, if you will. But what I did was, I was basically like, you know what? As my AP language and composition teacher always said, show, don't tell. So that's what I did. I wrote a very, okay, literally I wrote one sentence just to give a bit of a preface to what they were going to read. Um, but I said, I wrote a poem that was inspired by the depth of language in Hamilton. Rhymes that work together so uncannily that I wonder if the creators of the English language knew they'd be written one day. Yeah, that's the only sentence I wrote. And then I just put in this poem that I wrote one time called Hair. Yeah, so, you know, a little bit outside of the box, but I think it works. I think it's fine. You know, show, don't tell. I mean, they are asking you to tell, but I kind of just didn't. I showed. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's what I did for that prompt. And then last, but of course not least, is the creative submission. So a creative, sub so basically the prompt is a creative submission that shows visual storytelling and imaginative expression of thought. So you can choose one of the following. You can do a film and it can't be any longer than 10 minutes, or you can do a portfolio of drawings, paintings, sculpture, or set design or you can do a like storyboard or you can do a a submission of creative writing so what i did and i assume is the most popular choice is doing a film um so the film i did for this i do have it posted on my channel and i will say it is like the production quality compared to other people's films i've watched who are like accepted into this i'm like not up there but you know i just feel like the story of it does make up for it so i would say don't be discouraged if you don't have a lot of re <coughs> so i would say don't be discouraged if you don't have a lot of resources um and you don't think maybe you can make a film you can do writing which is pretty accessible or you know you don't need like super high-end expensive stuff to you know make something that has value so i think this video is really really long and if you made it all the way here wow thank you i really really hope this helped you guys out and i will totally answer any other questions you have about this and um yeah, I just really hope this helped you and I wish you the best of luck if you are applying to this and you want to get into it. So yeah, and I'll talk to you guys in my next video.